I want to revisit AI Seinfeld for this video because I saw some interesting things recently with it, and hey, since I did make that video on it and expressed an interest in it initially, I'm curious what it's been up to in the meantime. So let's get started. When we last looked at AI Seinfeld, it was this hot topic that the internet was momentarily obsessed with because it showed a glimpse into an AI future. We had already seen it for over a year with the possibilities of AI art programs, but now with an AI TV program, what could this mean for the future of entertainment? But as I was releasing my initial video on it, the show received a ban on Twitch because, as is an expected occurrence for new AI tools, it made some offensive joke. The flavor of the month was transphobia. So the show gets unbanned two weeks later, and some changes have been made. Notably, all the characters have been replaced, so the Seinfeld parody characters are now knockoffs of the Seinfeld parody characters. Well, that's definitely a first in the world of AI. I don't know if, like, Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David's lawyers got in contact with them, and that's why this got changed. But one of the other significant changes to the show was the removal of Jerry's stand-up routines, for monologues in the form of blog rants. Dear Internet, There are things in the world that bear such absurdities that humanity quivers at their mere intimation. Like one's reflection on a reflective balloon, only half warped, a bizarre face peers back at you from an angle seeming not your own, yielding an unasked clown smile. But of course, no one really cared that much afterwards. While there was a Discord community around the show, I personally never saw a discussion of the show after its initial ban minus a tweet that began making the rounds in late October. The tweet reads, The long-forgotten AI Seinfeld reboot is now down to 18 viewers. For reference, the stream peaked with 20,000 viewers in January of this year. It continues, both characters don't even say anything anymore and just stand still in complete silence. In a follow-up tweet, there is a strange orange man that patrols the house silently. He disappears for minutes at a time, only to reappear sitting on a couch. So naturally, seeing this, I was intrigued, but at this point in time, I was working on other things, thus the delay in me covering this. There is another interesting component of this breakdown of the show that also made the rounds and also made me intrigued to revisit the topic. This video demonstrates a total breakdown of the show, where one character stares at a fridge while the other moonwalks towards it. So when I decided to check out the show earlier today for this video, I was expecting something like this to happen. Instead, I was somewhat pleasantly surprised to find the show was functioning, but with an incredible amount of lag. Regret is something you'll plenty know about when you blow up the moon, Leo Ski. Me? What on earth does this have to do with me? It felt like the dialogue was being generated in real time, but in the same way you had to wait a minute for a dolly to generate an image over a year ago. It wasn't at all instantaneous, and if this was a test of improv, the quartet would surely fail. Of course, the original Seinfeld had the benefit of being scripted and edited, but if one of Jerry Seinfeld's own routines, or hell, if comedians in cars had this sort of delay, I'm sure the audience would be concerned Mr. Seinfeld has seizure on stage. But the oddities don't stop. The original jokes of the previous iteration predominantly were about when the machine would fuck up. But if the machine continues to contort this man's torso every time I see him on screen, is it a bug or a feature? Music plays in the background, but in such a forced manner that I can't see this as nothing but intentional. It plays through the weather report, it plays through transitions, it plays through scenes, it is always on a loop like it was just dropped in without care. You ever think about how many mistakes we've made? I mean, just look at us. We're like misprinted dollar bills. Spooky ambience.mp3 mixed with the long pauses mixed with existential dialogue. Even the original had the occasional fourth wall break, but my cynicism leads me to believe the creators saw the reaction this had in the public and decide to make it fully intentional. But if you continue punching holes through the fourth wall, there is no fourth wall anymore, merely a pile of plastered dust and the occasional wooden stud. Don't you ever feel like the goblin is watching you?
Sometimes when I'm alone, I hear creaks, and I swear. The one singular chat message I saw while watching this for about 20 minutes read, content. This message perfectly encapsulates my attitude towards the idea of content and even the labeling of content creators. It is the most pessimistic and reductive term, yet a very accurate term no different to also labeling a painting as a product. After all, someone commissioned someone to paint this, so it is a product sold to them. However, like the plastic bullshit that floods an Amazon warehouse, anything that is sold to someone is a product no matter its quality. The reduction of all work to be leveled on the same playing field as the passionless input of a text field for a machine to make based on fine-tuned algorithms leaves no satisfaction beyond receiving a thing, versus critical enjoyment of something more meaningful. So yes, in the end, the viewer was content with their shows. So what was once a vibrant show with thousands interacting with it has become no different to the once successful mall. At its peak, thousands were in attendance, yet now it lays to waste and rot away until inevitably, a chat GPT subscription expires. Then the program will freeze on its last generated frame as the music loop continues. Eventually, a power surge kills the machine, and even on reboot, the program is never run again. And while the show is still airing after almost a year, it does not look like it will be anything forever because with the last few viewers, the show will die a silent death not too different to a long-forgotten website, a forgotten MMO, or any sort of fad. Don't you ever feel like the goblin is watching you? Sometimes when I'm alone, I hear creaks, and I swear. Snickers of laughter. Like a cruel vindictive sprite. I put on my most appealing outfit, but the laughter just seems louder. Maybe it's all in my head, all these insecurities. Goblin or no goblin, Kelly, you look fine. Listen, if there was such thing as this goblin, he'd be probably laughing at me too. Did I tell you how I got lost writing this new comedy skit yesterday? Completely lost track of time, had my electricity cut off for not paying my bills. It's funny when you think about it, a writer trapped by his own script. I've never heard of anything so ridiculous. We're so pathetic, aren't we? <laughs> Speak for yourself. I am creating art. Perhaps the goblin thrives on our misery. Kelly, what if we are the goblins? fueling our own failures, laughing at our own misfortunes, getting lost in our heads when the world needs us to stay grounded, and fixated on our looks when there is so much more to life. Yeah, that's it. We are the goblins, Kelly, goblins of our own lives. The most interesting thing I can do right now would be to look at a couple things I said in my previous video on the topic because I did make a few predictions on how this would pan out, so let's see if I was right or wrong. The very first thing I said was that AI is the future. Anything relating to AI, I'm going to find uh, interesting to look into and be intrigued because it is the future. Um, it's already here. So I still stand by this because even though this program is clearly dead, the fact of the matter is that it isn't stopping people from pursuing AI shit. If anything, I think the collapse of this AI program is actually a good indication of what is to come. For instance, let's say you have a tool that generates Broadway musicals, right? What will eventually happen, as what happens with all software, is it will cease being supported. So whenever the next update to a backend feature happens, it will likely break it aka if an API change or something is discontinued, then the program itself will break, not even because of an input by the developers. This is actually something that we've seen recently with Twitter, because since it's closing off from the world, where for the most part you need an account to just browse it, a lot of search results for Twitter have broken, as well as a lot of tweets just redirect you to this login screen, so I can only imagine what a bot that was using the site's API was having to deal with when the changes were made. 
Now, a better example is actually something that's happening right now with YouTube's war on ad block. Ad blockers are having to dynamically update their own software to account for changes that YouTube is making on their end. But if you were to say lag behind or just not update for even like a brief moment, it's possible that your ad blocker software will no longer be blocking ads simply because it's relying on some kind of feature or lack thereof that no longer exists. So really, we see the same thing with AI where ultimately the people that are developing AI are big companies. So it's not exactly like, say, a Linux situation where it's open source and anyone can develop for it. If, say, someone that was a key developer died, someone can easily pick up their work. Whereas with AI, because of it being with Microsoft, OpenAI, so on and so forth, even Google as well, you very easily can have software just being left behind because these programs are continually being updated and changed. Now, is this no different to a TV show? In my opinion, I think it's actually much worse. So what I'm talking about is eventually a TV show, even a long running one like Seinfeld, Frasier, Friends, House, Sopranos, you get the picture. It will reach its final episode. I think this is a much better send off as opposed to just letting the show continue running until it's unceremonious shutdown because the software behind it broke. It puts a solid end to the show. It tells you it is done and overall everyone just recognizes it as a finished show now. It's like having a film that never ends as opposed to a film that does end after two hours. So moving on, later on in the video, I say this. Really, really make a network, like a TV network from the 90s or 2000s. Really do that, and I think, I think you could actually have a, a pretty, like, long, like, I, I think that this would be something that would end up lasting longer than just maybe the month that this thing's going to be popular. So as my noisy ass radiator cuts on, I'll explain this real quick. Basically, I'm suggesting this novelty could have had a longer longevity to it if it was expanded from a lone show into an AI show network, let's say AI NBC. On one hand, I think there is still something someone will do, but on the other, I do not think anymore that would have solved the problem. You see, the thing is, ultimately people only cared about this because of the novelty of AI Seinfeld. Even if there was an AI Frasier, AI Sopranos, and AI Breaking Bad, the initial wow of that novelty wouldn't be any bigger. On top of that, any sort of emotional bond someone would have had to this network or show wouldn't really exist because that takes time to develop. What I mean is, ask someone about 2000's Adult Swim, ask someone about their thoughts on a primetime drama, think about how fans of a show will get talking to other fans, that kind of stuff. All of that is important to perpetuating a show's legacy after it stopped being filmed, but on one hand, if the show never ends, or if it doesn't have fans that get emotionally attached to it because they really can't, then it doesn't really have that much of a legacy in culture. So I'm going to end off this video by just talking about my general thoughts on AI and as well content creation. Now I don't think it is that much of a secret that I'm not that much of a fan of AI. I am only interested in it because of it being a technological thing. Otherwise, from a creative standpoint, I am completely opposed to AI. The reason for this, I think, is made very clear in this specific example. With AI Seinfeld, yes, there were people that had to program it, that had to set it up. But when it comes to the actual thing that is being made, because what they made was the program, but the thing that was being generated out of the program is what's coming out of the program, okay? That's why I'm going to frame here. The actual thing that's being made, being the show, if we compare it to the original Seinfeld, the fact of the matter is there were real people that worked on Seinfeld. There were real people who made decisions for each episode of the show, writing the jokes, building the sets, planning the camera movements, deciding when to cut, and even when to put in the fucking laugh track. All of this required human input. Now, of course, it's also the 1990s, so like hell, an AI was going to do that. But the reality of it is that the reason why Seinfeld is generally a good show is in 100% part because humans made it. It wasn't because a machine made it, humans made it, and skilled and passionate humans at that. So I think what AI Seinfeld demonstrates is it makes clear why human-created things are infinitely more valuable than AI-created things. 
even the worst episodes of a show will have more entertainment value and cultural value than AI will ever have, in my opinion. Now, here's the thing is on YouTube, there has been a long going debate for a while, really for many years with reaction content, but I think it has also uh, come back into the forefront of the YouTube discussion because of also AI happening at the same time. Basically with the idea being that human reactions end up being on par with like AI generated reactions. Now on one hand, I'm not going to disagree with that all that much. And the reason why is because I think that is a fair criticism if your reaction to stuff that you're then putting out onto the internet is something that could be easily made with an AI, considering how stupid AI is. I think that that is a fair criticism. And as well, if your videos are as interesting as just some AI generated thing and lack any kind of personality that hard, then yeah, that's another fair criticism. Because in my opinion, the reality of it is, is that even with the most simple of YouTube videos, there is still a way of conveying a sense of giving a fuck and also having your personality exist. So if the presentation of your videos feels that watered down, that it is akin to watching a robot, well then all it is is just a change in language because instead of saying robot, we're saying AI now. So the last thing I want to talk about because I think that this is a more important consequence of the real world is I think that this also demonstrates the importance of the WGA and SAG-AFTRA strikes from the summer and autumn. The fact of the matter is, is that real people make the shows and films you watch including the good and bad shows. Without humans, you just end up with AI Seinfeld. So if you want something that is going to be beyond AI Seinfeld, then you're going to be seeking out normal shows made by humans. Remove the human comedic ability from Seinfeld, that you really do end up with a show where nothing happens. So ultimately, that is why one of these union strikes specifically does matter when it comes to entertainment. Because if WGA or SAG-AFTRA or IATSE goes on strike, because WGA and SAG-AFTRA did just go on strike, there aren't going to be films being made out of Hollywood, New York, or any kind of union production. Because to make a film, you need a writer, you need actors, you need people in hair and makeup, you need people in wardrobe, you need people that are designing the set, you need grips who will move and rig everything. Thing. You need people that are putting the mics on the actors, that are holding the boom mic and recording all of this. You need people building and operating the camera for every shot. And you need electricians to plan and set up lights. I'm hoping I haven't forgotten a very obvious department. Because how you get a good film or a good TV show is you need a lot of people working on set. In the context of these types of productions, that is what's necessary. This is why it's also important to properly pay workers who work on these productions. Because without them, you have no production. You have no content. So when these strikes do happen, it is because the workers are not being fairly compensated for their labor and is why they are ultimately very important to keep track of, and as well keep paying attention to and not forget about. And of course, because I want to make this very clear at the end of the video, I am just talking about films and TV shows because that is virtually in the scope of what we're looking at for an AI TV show, right? We aren't talking about AI YouTubers or anything like that. We are talking about an AI TV show. And the reality is, of course, that TV shows like Seinfeld had a lot of people working on them and still do. Alright, subscribe to the channels. I'm out.